Greetings fellow Gorehounds and welcome back to a Blood Splattered Vlog. I'm the Horror Guru. And I'm Count Jackula. And we just watched the new Shudder exclusive horror movie, Bliss, which is also the latest movie by Joe Begos, which was... His, one of his first movies, Almost Human, was one of the first Blood Splattered vlogs I did. So this is like a weird coming full circle kind of thing going yeah. on here. A new era has begun. <laughs> Absolutely. And uh, that that first movie he made, I, I really liked. It was really low budget. It was it was one of those movies where you could tell that they there was a bunch of friends getting together and making the best movie they can. And they kind of made this like... Uh, John Carpenter esque version of Extra. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> and it, it was weird. <laughs> it was weird, but I liked it. Um, this movie is probably equally lo equally low budget, but you can definitely tell he has honed his skills. Oh yeah, uh, it's a much better movie since since uh, Almost Human, and I am. Now looking forward to anything this guy makes because I love the shit out of this movie, Bliss. Yeah, he is apparently now making one about, like, veterans that have to kill mutants. I'll, <laughs> I'll watch the shit out of it. So, Bliss, this is basically a splatterpunk movie about an artist who's slowly turning into a vampire. That's, yeah, that's, that's the crux of it. That's the whole movie, baby. <laughs> With a huge emphasis on splatter punk. We're talking, this movie is full of punk metal and goth music. It's mm. full of fucking, uh, <gasps> 80s style, colorful lighting, greens, blues, like purples all over the place. Got a lot of drugs Got in it. Got a lot of drugs. It's shot on 16 millimeter just to give it that extra grime. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Cause you could tell that this is a movie that was in, there were, there are two movies in particular that you can tell were inspirations for this. One is Liquid Sky. The other was Brain Damage by Frank Henlotter. 100%. Yeah. 100%. <laughs> like, I, here's the thing. One of the things that everyone's going to experience when they watch this movie is that this is obviously a low-budget movie. The actors are not the greatest Oscar-winning actors of all time. But, but they're, they're not bad. But much like a Frank Henlotter film, they're perfect for their roles. Yeah, exactly. You exactly. can't imagine anyone else playing these roles once you've seen the movie. And, uh, and like, the entire time I was sitting there watching the movie, I kept thinking about Frank Hennelotter films, even though this is set in Los Angeles and Frank Hennelotter famously only filmed in New York. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's, and it's uh, in the modern day. Yes. And, weirdly enough, it's way more 90s where Frank Henlotter was a bit more 80s. Yeah, yeah, there's a little bit of 90s in here, but there's still a lot of 80s in here, too. Oh, yeah, definitely, definitely. Like, you can feel a little bit, like, there's a scene towards the end of this movie that felt like something straight out of Maniac. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah. So if you're an old-school horror fan, if you like yourself some splatterpunk, then I highly recommend this movie. Yeah, there's <laughs> there's some buzz about this film on Twitter, Totally deserve. Oh, yeah. Totally deserve. Oh, yeah. It's also a bit of a hallucinogenic nightmare because part of the whole thing is that she doesn't realize she's becoming a vampire at first. She thinks she just needs her next drug fix, so she's getting high off her ass the entire movie. Well, that's where the brain damage comes <laughs> yeah. in. So you get a little bit of brain damage. It's also where some of the liquid sky comes in because that movie feels yes. like an acid trip. Yeah, and this movie has an as has aspects of that too, especially in like the second act. Yeah, I would <laughs> now when I say Liquid Sky, because your mileage may vary. Uh, I love Liquid Sky, but <laughs> is it a great movie? No, 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 I, it I, isn't. This this takes what Liquid Sky was doing and kind of perfects it. Everything that this movie reminded me of, with the exception of maybe brain damage, I liked this movie better than the things that I thought it was. Oh well it's hard by. it's hard to compare <laughs> it's hard to compare a I movie love to brain, brain damage. damage. I love brain damage. So I'm not <laughs> sure if I would say it was better than that, but definitely I thought it was better than Liquid Sky. Oh yeah, yeah, I would agree. I would um, agree. it also reminded me of shades of that movie Contagion about that girl who goes to a party and then gets drugged and raped and then slowly starts to turn into a zombie. It reminded Reminded me a little bit of that movie, but like done even way better than that. I oh, like. Yeah. Well, it's, it's this, this is once far more. This one's far more frenetic. Yes. Shit is happening, whereas Contagion is very slow, and it also has way more style. Oh yeah, yeah, like, yeah. Because Contagion was shot like a like your average like mid two thousands film. Mm -hmm. You know, which is like you know very neutral color palette. Yep. You know, very slow long. A shots. lot of good body horror. horror don't oh get yeah, me wrong. yeah, 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 yeah. Some it's of that not, shit was not gnarly. A, it's not a bad movie, but it is. Everything, Slow compared to Bliss. Every, Bliss moves at lightning speed. Everything you could say that movie was missing, this movie has. Yeah. Um, 
And goddamn, it's bloody as fuck. I love the soundtrack. Electric Wizards on this soundtrack. <laughs> like, <laughs> I don't think I'd ever see a movie that had Electric Wizard on the soundtrack. Like the 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 most um, stoner metal of stoner metal bands. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But hey, you know, like that's like when uh, fucking. Oh, not Stone Temple Pilots, but Fishbone was in like what's like Repo Man. Yeah, Repo Man. Yeah. There's an there's an aesthetic here that is also reminiscent of Repo oh, Man. Oh, one hundred percent. There's a lot of Repo Man in this. Yeah. Um, I realize that if you haven't seen any of the movies we're talking about, you have no idea what we're doing, what what we're saying. But if you have seen those movies, and hopefully, like like you started getting a little hard down here. Oh yeah. <laughs> you know, you started started getting a half chub thinking about this. Yeah. Because this movie is fucking phenomenal. Um, and I say that seeing all of its flaws, you know, like the lead actress isn't the greatest, but she's perfect for the role. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You <laughs> never don't believe her. Exactly. And I, you know? and I have a hard time, especially towards the end when you start to see her really lose her mind, imagining anyone else in that role and it being as satisfying. Correct. You know, because she's just got the right look. She's got the right, like, like feeling to her. She's got the right attitude. Like, everything's just... Well, it's like, it's like um, Hannah Freerman as Lily in VHS. Oh, yeah. Like, when they were going to make the big one, it's like, if she's not in this role, then no go, no dice. Yeah, yeah, this only works because she is perfect at it. Yeah. You know? Man, and this also, like, kind of qualifies under the, like, the, the new trend of, like, the current horror movies where you have, like, the girl is not only the final girl, but also the monster. Yeah, yeah, there have been a f <laughs> few more of those, you, you know, know, lately. Yeah, like Starry Eyes is a great example of that. Mm -hmm. Movies like that, like well, oh. dep depending on the on uh, whether you believe it's about uh, being transgender. Um, oh yeah, uh, fucking uh, hereditary. Hereditary. Uh, there's a uh, what is it? Um, uh, the witch. The witch also has a little bit of that. Yeah, a little bit, <laughs> but like the girl's not actually doesn't actually kill. No, anybody. no, she do, no. she doesn't. But like she, she certainly makes some choices in that movie. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, by the by the end of the movie, like how to put it, how to put it, there's been a lot of like embracing the dark yes, side. Yes, you know? yes. I, I, Come that, to the dark side. That's it. This cookies, falls into that same know? category of the final girl who embraces the dark side over the course of the movie. Yeah, that's, that's certainly what this is. But the other thing I liked about this movie is that this movie actually does have like. A thematic point to it. Essentially, oh, yeah. Yeah. what this movie is about is it's about an artist who is a really fucking good artist, but ends up in a rut and ends up relying a little too heavy on drugs to get the art out. Yeah. And as a result, she ends up creating masterpiece, a masterpiece, but it ends up consuming her over the course of the movie. Yeah, to yeah, do yeah. It. It's basically it's 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 a frenetic. It's an expression of what. A painter goes through internally yep. when creating a, a major work. So, like the vampirism is essentially a giant metaphor for the drug addiction. Yeah, you know, it gives her this big high, it gives her this thrill, it, it allows her to fire on all cylinders with her art, but it is turning her into an undead killing machine. Yeah, <laughs> and uh, well, I also liked that I could I could really tell that it was trying to. It was really trying to get into the feeling of that zone where everything is just going lightning fucking yep. fast and time just becomes no object because you're just obsessed with this one piece. Yep. But I also know that that it looks nothing like that from the outside. <laughs> on the on the outside, it just looks like this. Yep. Yep. <laughs> It's it's totally subjective filmmaking. It's oh from yeah, her totally. Point of view. Yeah. <laughs> and also the experience of like blacking out, waking up, and then realizing you did a piece that you don't remember doing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's that uh, like that thing that uh, Van Gogh talks about. Yep. You know, and then it's like I am transported, and then I come back, and the picture's finished. Yep. Yep. So I don't know what more to talk about without getting into direct spoilers. Uh, needless to say, I highly recommend Bliss. George Went is in the movie. George Went, that's right. That's right. <laughs> if, you, if you're Norm! A, if you're an old fan of Cheers and Frasier, then he's in this movie. Yeah, well, we were actually commenting about the fact that like this is kind of a return to his origins because oh, yeah. George Went started in low budget horror movies, stuff like House and uh, yep. what was it? Um, Oh shit! Um, I know he was in Empire of the Ants, but that was way yeah. That's later way. That's career. way later. Yeah. Uh, fuck! I know what you're talking about. 
I am spacing on it. On Whatever. The name of the damn thing. Eighties horror movies that had George Went. <laughs> yeah, there, there's more than there's more than one of them by yeah. a little bit, but they get really obscure. <laughs> but yeah, he's in this movie, which is pretty cool. Um, so yeah, this movie is a Shutter exclusive movie. I think you can watch it on other platforms, but you have to buy it. But if you have Shutter, you can watch it for free right now, and it yeah. is totally well. Worth you can it. you can also rent it on Amazon Prime. That's true. That's true. Um, so, but if you have Shutter, you probably absolutely have, have on Prime. So you know. Also, uh, uh, Joe Bigos, Bagos. I'm Joe, not entirely sure how to pronounce. I'm pretty sure it's Bagos. Bagos. Yeah. He's got a new movie, as he said, coming out later this year. So if you like this movie, then start looking into that new movie. Cause... Yeah, 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 and check out Almost Human as well. Oh yeah, I like yeah, Almost it is, Human. It is. It is. It is definitely a. Uh, earlier film oh yeah it's 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 the evil dead the movie that they made on the lowest budget you know? well, i was i was actually going to compare it to uh basket case versus basket case 2 oh yeah i could see that yeah that yeah. makes sense too you know you're like oh this is really good whoa really rough but, <laughs> yep. like you know it's like wait look at that stop motion <laughs> <laughs> but you know you don't fucking care because it's still a fucking mutant lump of flesh fucking up a room yep 100% <laughs> And so, with that all said, uh, let us move on to the spoilers. Not sure entirely what we can spoil. We can talk about some of the shit that happens. like Yeah, because <laughs> like, the movie kind of wears everything it is on its sleeve, and it's about watching it happen. Yeah, yeah, because once you know it's about, once you know, because it tells you on the fucking tin, that it's yeah. a movie about an artist slowly turning into a vampire, you kind of know how that's going to go. But, like, there's a lot of really cool twists and turns in the way it's done. Like, yeah. the drug trippy, like, five minute sex sequence the, oh yeah, the bisexual uh, threesome. Yeah, that the happens. The, uh, the, the <laughs> totally obviously inspired by Liquid Sky yep. sequence, where she, another girl, and this dude, uh, the other girl and the dude being these really gothy looking like uh, uh, punks. Uh, oh yeah, they look like they looked like everyone I knew from the nineties. Exactly, you know, which was obviously the idea. Like she hooks up with them at a party really early on in the movie and like snorts some cocaine. And what was the the drug that she had? There was like a very specific drug that she got from the. Um... Oh, it was a strain of co it was a strain of special co cocaine called Bliss. Bliss, that's hence right. The title of the movie. Yeah, she got Bliss, but that's the Bliss is not how she gets she gets vampire. It's actually uh, yeah, the, she's actually turned during a drug trip that she later blacks out. Yeah, so she so she doesn't remember it happened. She thinks it's Bliss, but it's actually the uh, the two friends that turned her um, during their threesome, which is a threesome that goes all the way. We're talking oh, like. Yeah. This gets X-rated at times, and oh, yeah, I loved it. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It was, it was <laughs> you're like, like, how to put it, as only independent cinema can. Yes. I was just like, oh, man, if this were a movie in theaters, they would have cut this sequence so short, but I'm glad it's not. Because yeah, no, get... no, no. This would have had to, this, this is the type, the, this is the type of movie, and they start the movie out this way, so they're letting you know. Like, <laughs> this is the type of movie you would have read it at a, at a video store. Yes. You know, because it has an opening that is, like, imitating those old crappy like VHS openings <laughs> to give you an idea of the kind of stuff that you see happen in this movie that you wouldn't see in a normal R rated movie. There's a point in which one of the dudes is eating a girl's ass. It happens. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> you know, just, just and his head is high on. enough to where you're like, that's not the pussy. <laughs> oh yeah. 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 No, it's clearly, clearly we know what we're doing. Yes. Um, so that's, that's what happens. And then, uh, as the movie goes on, she starts to black out. She starts having these, um, uh, drug adventures at clubs that end in bloody nightmares of... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because as it, uh, that's one of the reveals, which is the reason she's high, getting so high all the time isn't just because it's fueling her art. It's because it's the one thing that makes the desire for blood go away. Yeah, she essentially she thinks that she's uh, she's having withdrawals. Um, she thinks that it's the drugs and that that's what's happening. And it's not until um, she starts eating people directly and remembering it because she doesn't remember it for a while. Yeah, that she starts to realize that oh no, something else is going on here. 
And that's when her friend tells her that's like, <laughs> yeah. nah, nah, it's not the drugs. You know it's not the drugs. You know what's going on. <laughs> you just got to embrace it, baby. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, there's so many, like, little, like, so many nice little, like, uh, uh, vampire, mm -hmm. like, fan nods. Yep. Because you know what's going on. Oh, yeah. You know, sort of like, yeah, you've been, ooh, it's a, it's a warm embrace. You know, yep. like that kind of shit. Yeah. <laughs> a couple of Lost Boys moments, you know. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> But with girls. <laughs> yeah. I Oh, my God. So good. One of the other things that's really good about this movie is, like uh, Lauder films, mm. it's about an outsider who is not necessarily very likable. No, no. She herself is very much a raging bitch. Yeah. But the thing is, is that every character is so well written that you understand their perspective. Oh, yeah. Like, you understand why she sh she's such a raging bitch. You also understand why her, like... I don't know if you want to call him boyfriend character, like, but why he's so concerned about her taking all the drugs. Oh, yeah. Um, you also understand why the other friends are all like, nah, just embrace being a vampire and have fun, baby. Like, you, yeah, you yeah, get yeah. everyone's perspective. You even get the asshole fucking uh, 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 manager of hers. Um, oh, yeah, yeah, her agent. Yeah, yeah, her asshole agent, who is an asshole and, and a piece of shit, and she's totally right to kick them to the curb. But you even understand some of his perspective watching her go around and yeah, his little yeah, his yeah. concerns. Yeah, like because he's <laughs> like, uh, I can't, I'm spending all my time managing you and I'm getting no money out of it? You know, like, It seems you like mind? you're just getting strung out and getting high and not really giving me anything to sell. Yeah. And so I'm like, I get it. Even though oh, the character is complete break. He's yeah. such an unlikable ass. <laughs> yeah. He's the closest thing to a purely unlikable character the movie has. Oh, yeah. Everyone else has hebs and flows, you know? Like... Yeah. Even the dealer. Like, the, oh, the yeah. <laughs> dealer, up until the end of the movie, the dealer is the one that you feel the worst for. Yeah, yeah. You feel pretty bad you for know, him. You know, because he's... He, he takes a turn for the worst, though. <laughs> he takes a turn for the worst at the very end. But up until that moment, you're like, oh, man. Like, look, this guy's your friend. You're Look. Your dealer is telling you, holy shit, you've taken too much. You need to fucking slow down. Are yeah. you okay? Need me to take you to the hospital? Look, the dealer is telling you that. That is a clear <laughs> sign. Stop. Oh, one of the other fucking things. This is just a little detail. It's in the very beginning that I fucking love. When she first takes the bliss, you know, he's like, yeah, this is going to be great. And she's like, yeah, I'll buy some. He's like, you want, you want to try a bump first? Actually, I think those are two different characters. I think Cl oh, really? Clive and the dealer are two different characters. Oh, they're both dudes with be white dudes with beards. Oh, so that's easy to mix them up. Right, but they're actually two different characters. You're right. Yeah. Clive does show up and like fuck her and get concerned, and then they they smoke weed together. But then the guy she's getting uh uh the bliss from is a completely right. different guy. That's right, because she just flat out. Yeah, she may or may not have... Actually, we we actually don't know if any of the people she killed in that room became vampires or not. No, no. One of them, it looked like they did, but it was also part of her weird hallucination where you're not sure if that happened or not. But you kind of think it does because it makes sense if it did. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, because this is definitely like a movie where it's like one bite and you're hooked. Yep. You know? Um, but like, yeah, the, the drug dealer scene where he's like, all right, here's the bliss. And he's like, you want to try it out? You want, want to do a bump? Okay, yeah. now... In cocaine lore, in drug lore, a bump is like that much, like a little beep, a little bit, and you go like that. And, you know, that lasts for like 10, 20 minutes. Um, she's like, yeah, sure, I'll do it. She then fucking cuts out two of the fattest fucking lines oh, yeah. I have ever seen. Yeah. And I'm like, your heart's going to stop. Yep. And, well, you know, uh, it does, technically. technically. Yeah. yeah. You you also get some gnarly fucking splatter gore in this movie. Like we're talking like bites into arms that are just gushing oh, blood. Yeah. We're talking yeah. like a dude whose neck is completely snapped back. That was actually the one scene where I was actually confused on which character it was, because there's a point at the end of the movie in which one of the characters she kills comes back as a vampire. It's like, oh, you just wanted a friend. And I couldn't tell if it was the dealer or if it was Clive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because they're because, both dudes with they're, they're both dudes with like millennial beards. And part yeah. of the reason why I couldn't tell was because he had a bite out of his neck and she bit the one dude's neck, but the other guy had his neck completely snapped off. Yeah. So I was like, okay, they both have neck wounds, but this looks like it's the dealer's one, but he's talking like he's Clive. And so I probably need to rewatch the movie to re make sure well, which character Well, let me, was. let me, let me, let me be clear. 
This is the second time I watched that movie, and I'm still not clear on <laughs> that part. Not... <laughs> you know, like, I hate that was the movie in which the white dudes are interchangeable. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> well, because, like, we also establish that uh, the vampires basically heal from anything except sunlight and the heart. Yeah. Yep. You know, um, so if he was turned into a vampire, it could have healed back. And all yeah, because stuff. we actually watched that happen at one point. Oh man! Oh man! So there's a scene mm -hmm. where she's in the bathroom and she's trying to commit suicide. <laughs> that scene is great. Yeah. yeah, yeah. She doesn't. It doesn't succeed. They use you a know? lot of really cool, like um, Evil Dead esque stop motion effects for some of like the decaying of the face and the restructuring of the face, as well as yeah. like when they're actually stabbed in the heart and they start to melt. It's literally them taking like a wax figure and like putting it under. Yeah, I'm actually, I'm, I'd actually be really, particularly for the scene where she heals after shooting herself in the head. I'd be interested to see how to know how much of that was uh, editing, how much of it was mm -hmm. uh, CGI, oh, yeah. would, and how much of it was practical. I would love to watch a breakdown of that. Yeah, scene. yeah, because like one of the one of the ways that they get around a lot having a lot of gore in this without having to like. Without fucking mm -hmm. up cinema verite, is um, it was a mise en scene, whatever. I fucking anyway, is that it's shot in the dark, but it's very clear what's happening. Yeah, like it's like all right, as long as that looks like blood gushing out, it, mm -hmm. it doesn't matter if it's dark because we know it's like. It's not like when I was sitting there watching the turning and I couldn't see what the hell was happening. You could see everything that's happening in this movie, but it's definitely like. Uh, some things are left in shadow purposefully. Yeah, you know, like we're hiding the hose yeah. or the fact that there's like something strapped over yep. here and, you know, but it's done to great effect. Or getting like a slight silhouette when she's like throwing up in the thing so you can like see like the wall is lit up and she's kind of dark but you can see the the splatter of yeah, the blood coming yeah, out of her yeah, mouth. Yeah, 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 yeah. You can tell that, I, I was amazed that they actually shot this on 16 mil. Oh, yeah. You know? And you could tell they used every fucking uh, centimeter of the 16 mil because there's a lot of times where they use the end of the reel as part of their effect. Yeah. <laughs> um, where, it's, where it's like looking like it's starting to like fucking break apart and stuff. And they use that multiple times throughout the movie. Sometimes when she's just driving and it actually adds a layer of, of, um, of um, unsta instability. Uh, yeah, to, yeah, like, because it's a shots. story about things being unstable, yep. so you feel like the movie is going to fall apart at any Absolutely. moment. Absolutely. <laughs> it's definitely a using every part of the buffalo. Yeah, it, <laughs> oh, I loved, yeah, it does, yeah, because it, it it does the, yeah, it does the video store equivalent of the thing that they would do in um, Grindhouse, where it was like, would they do a jump cut to the same thing? Oh, yeah. Like, you know, <laughs> you know? <laughs> You know, but obviously because it's a video store thing, that the style's a little bit different. But you it's, also get the same idea. This great sequence at the end where she's kind of fully embraced the vampirism and she's slowly like this losing it. But she's finishing the painting, and while she's doing it, she's having an hallucination of all her victims coming to like drag her down, um, which is kind of what her painting actually is. Yeah. Um, and what I like about it is that it feels like it's straight out of Maniac. Oh, you know, yeah. Like when the mannequins come alive and start to come after him. Um, it's not the end, end shot of the movie. The end, end shot of the movie is something I'll leave for you to watch for yourself. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, the final, like, five seconds of the movie are great. <laughs> but it is tw it is towards, the, it is the m emotional climax of the movie of that happening. Um, God, this movie is so fucking this, good. This, this, no, this movie, like, sucks you off, finishes up, cleans oh, you up yeah. afterwards. And, and then, then eats your ass. Eats your ass and then gives you a, <laughs> and then mixes you a cocktail. Yep. Holy mm. crap. That's have service, a, baby. This video is going to be demonetized so quickly and I don't oh, care. so fucking fast. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. No, I, uh. This movie is bliss. <laughs> dude, I know it's a 60 millimeter movie. Can't wait for that 4K Blu-ray. <laughs> I'm me telling too. you, man. Me too. I'm this this is definitely you. a movie I want to own. This yeah. Is, well, like, they're, 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 this is one of the movies I really, really want to own along with Kuzo mm -hmm. that I'm like, I don't know if there's ever going to be a home, if there's going to be a, a physical release. Oh, maybe not. You know, I hope so because, like, I it's would, a shutter exclusive, so it might not. Yeah, exactly. You mm -hmm. know, like, I would love it if it has one, but I don't know if that will happen. You know? Unlike Color Out of Space, where we already know that that's going to be. Ooh, yeah. Ooh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A lot of good stuff happening in the world of, like, far-out horror. Get that Shutter subscription. And you I know, know? Uh, I, I said in the last vlog that I'm going to be seeing uh, Gretel and Hansel next. Well, we ended up watching this movie in between then, so I'm still doing that movie. Just 
got to wait for it to come out this weekend. Yeah. Oh, actually, one of the one of the things. Uh, question. Yeah. The shirt that she's wearing is that a reference to a band I'm not familiar with, or was it literally a reference to Holy Mountain? The movie. It was obviously a reference to Holy Mountain, but it was written in the font of Ozzy Osbourne's logo. Yeah. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm like. Did I miss a shirt? Yeah, I wasn't sure. You know? I, I think it's a reference to both. I think it's an Ozzy reference and a... Uh, and a, and uh, a Jodorowsky which reference. Which makes sense because Ozzy is one of those artists that's notorious for the amount of drugs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, let, 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 let me put it this way. If there's ever merchandising about this for this thing and they fucking made that shirt for the movie, Holy Mountain I shirt. want one. Oh, yeah. I like that. I love that shirt. That shirt was fucking great. So yeah, um, again, if you have Shudder, watch Bliss. You will not be disappointed. Um, where can they find you, Count Jackula? Oh, well, I stream on Twitch. You can find me there at Count underscore Jackula. And uh, we stream throughout the week, but two days in particular. Mm -hmm. One is on Thursday at 6 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. The other is at 9 p.m. on Sunday. Specific, uh, Pacific Standard Time. Ah! Specific Standard Time. Specific Standard Time. <laughs> Pacific Standard Time. And uh, where we talk about all sorts of weird, groovy things with like people like uh, Yogi Dev Das. We speak about art and mysticism and the dark side and you but we usually just get drunk and, and talk bullshit. Yep. Pretty um much. that's 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 a big thing. If you want to join us, you're welcome to. Just come on down. I'm um, also on Twitter at count underscore Jacula and on Instagram at satanic Jacula. And uh, hey, I look forward to seeing y'all there. Absolutely. And y'all know me. I'm the horror guru. You can find me on Twitter. You can find me on Twitch. You can find me on YouTube and Facebook. Just look up the horror guru and bloodless splattered cinema. I don't know why I mentioned YouTube since that's where you are right now. But since you are here right now, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. And don't forget to ring that notification bell so that you're notified of my videos immediately upon their upload. Slash that like button. Slash that like button. <laughs> And splatter that notification bell! And um, uh, if you want to help the channel more directly, then I also have a Patreon page. And if you decide to go the Patreon route, know that even a dollar a month can go a long way. And uh, since some of you out there are probably wondering, uh, the new Blood Splattered Cinema is still being put together. It is on the classic... Um, uh, is it 90s or 80s? I have to check the date. But it's a classic video store horror movie, The Brain. It's an 80s one. 88. Yes, 88. 88. Yeah. The Brain. Um, I am putting that together. Uh, I... It's about a brain, giant brain that eats people. I was supposed to have it out by the end of this month, but towards the end of the month, I started getting sick because my girlfriend had a cold. And so I decided to take it easy for a week. <laughs> and she, yeah, she came in, bounced on top of you, left the flu, and <laughs> yep. went to work. <laughs> yep. So I'm going to have that together, and uh, she's going to be so mad right now. She's like, you threw me under the bus again. <laughs> It's going to be so bad. Love you, babe. <laughs> so hopefully I'll have that out sometime next month when I finish going over all the voiceovers and editing it together because we filmed that thing early and yet still I somehow managed to not get it done in time because that's my production schedule. Um, and uh, with that all said, peace out, my fellow gorehounds, and uh, we'll catch you all later. <laughs>